Hey, welcome back. If you're already a subscriber, John Lee here. In this video, we'll be talking about a major update. I just got an update to my tax refund status through the IRS to go app. I did not check the where's my refund tool, um, but I do have a major update. Remember, if you like videos like these, be sure and hit that like and subscribe button. We're just going to jump right into this and I'm going to show you exactly what uh, is showing on my IRS to go. If you have any updates, be sure to drop them in the comments below. Let's get right to it. Okay, so I punched in my information, and as you can see uh, on the IRS to go app, there's been some changes. You can see that my refund has been approved. This is as of Easter Sunday, um, 2021, April 4th. So we made changes to your tax return that changed the amount of your refund. You will receive a notice that explains the changes we made to your tax return. You should receive your notice and the balance of your refund, $5,404, by April 12, 2021. More details about the changes we made to your tax return. We changed the amount you claimed as recovery rebate credit on your tax return. The error was in one or more of the following. The Social Security number of one or more individuals claimed as a qualifying dependent was missing or incomplete. The last name of one or more individuals claimed as a qualifying dependent does not match our records. One of or more individuals claimed as a qualifying dependent exceeds the age limit. Uh, your adjusted gross income exceeds $75,000, which mine did not. So I think there's some errors in this. Um, definitely have to reach out to H&R Block tomorrow and see what's going on with that. The amount was computed incorrectly which H&R did my taxes, and I paid them $350 to do it right the first time. I really honestly can't believe that they messed it up. Uh, but here are some other numbers. Uh, but it is cool to finally have an update with an actual date, April 12, 2021. Uh, please read the following information related to your tax situations. Take a look at some of these. Am I eligible uh, generally, you were eligible for the first economic impact payment if you are a U.S. citizen or U.S. resident alien. You were not claimed as a dependent of another taxpayer and have a Social Security number valid for employment. We issued payments of $1,200, $2,400 for a joint return to individuals whose adjusted gross income did not exceed $150,000 if married, $112,500 if filing head of household, $75,000 for eligible individuals using any other filing status, Payments were reduced by 5% of the amount by which your AGI exceeds the applicable threshold above. There was an update in December 2020. The COVID-Related Tax Relief Act of 2020 increased the AGI phase-out amount for a qualifying widow or widower from $75,000 to $150,000. As a result, widows and widowers whose income was more than $75,000 should complete the recovery rebate credit worksheet to determine whether they may claim additional amounts as a recovery rebate credit on line 30 of their 2020 tax return. You were not eligible for the first payment if any of the following applied to you. You were claimed as a dependent on another taxpayer's return, for example, a child or student who may be claimed on a parent's return or a dependent parent who may be claimed on an adult child's return. You are a non-resident alien. You do not have a social security number that is valid for employment. Update. The first economic impact payment was not made to married couples filing joint returns unless both spouses had Social Security numbers valid for employment or at least one spouse was a member of the military. In December 2020, the COVID-related Tax Relief Act of 2020 changed this requirement. As a result, a married couple filing a joint return is eligible for a partial recovery rebate credit when only one spouse has a Social Security number valid for employment. If you and your spouse didn't receive the first economic impact payment, because one of you did not have a social security number valid for your employment, you may claim the recovery rebate credit on line 30 of your 2020 tax return. In addition, the following are ineligible for a payment individuals who died prior to January 1st, 2020 in estates or trusts. Updated, individuals who died in 2020 or 2021 may not have received economic impact payments. If you file a 2020 return for an individual who died in 2020 or 2021, you should complete the recovery rebate credit worksheet in the instructions for Form 1040 and 1040 SR to determine whether the recovery rebate credit is allowable for the descendant. And here's some other questions um, that you may be interested in getting on here. See, someone incarcerated. What does it mean by Social Security 
that is valid for employment. What is meant by a social security number that is valid for employment? Updated March 9th, 2020. For purposes of the first economic impact payment, a valid social security number for a payment is one that is valid for employment and issued by the Social Security Administration before the due date of your 2019 tax return, including the filing deadline postponement to July 15th and an extension to October 15th if you request it, or your 2018 tax return, including extensions. If you haven't filed your 2019 tax return, if the individual was a U.S. citizen when they received a Social Security number, then it is valid for employment. If not valid for employment, it is printed on the individual's Social Security card and the individual's immigration status has changed so that they are now a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. Ask the SSA for a new Social Security card. However, if valid for work only with DHS authorization is printed on the individual's Social Security card, the individual has the required Social Security number only as long as the Department of Homeland Security authorization is valid. If you didn't receive an economic impact payment because you did not have a Social Security number that is valid for employment before the due date of the 2019 or 2018 return, you may be able to claim the recovery rebate credit if you are issued and Social Security number valid for employment before the due date of your 2020 return, including extensions, and meet all other eligibility criteria. If you were married and filed a joint return and did not receive an economic impact payment because either you or your spouse did not have a Social Security valid for employment issued before the due date of the return that was used to determine eligibility for the economic impact payment. You may be able to claim the 2020 recovery rebate credit if at least one of you has or is issued a Social Security number valid for employment before the due date of your 2020 return, including extensions. Similarly, you may be able to claim an additional amount in 2020 recovery rebate credit for a child who has or is issued a Social Security number valid for employment before the due date of your 2020 tax return, including extensions, which is a child born, adopted, or placed in the foster care in 2020, a qualifying child for the payment, update March 9th, 2021. The first economic impact payment did not include an additional amount for these children because the payment was based only on information from your 2019 or 2018 tax return. You may claim qualifying children both adopted or placed into your foster care in 2021 for the 2020 recovery rebate credit and must file a 2020 tax return to claim the credit if eligible. So you can't always get on here and use the get my payment tool, but something is definitely off with mine. First economic impact payment questions and answers. Topic J, reconciling on your 2020 tax return. Well, I need to provide information about my economic impact payment to claim the recovery rebate credit on my 2020 tax return. This was updated March 22nd, 2021. Yes, refer to the notice you received regarding your first economic impact payment. These notices were mailed to each recipient's last known address within 15 days after the first payment was made. If you did not receive the first payment or did not receive the maximum amount, you may be eligible to claim the 2020 recovery rebate credit when you file your 2020 tax return. Is the payment includable in my gross income? No, the payment is not includable in your gross income. Therefore, you will not include the payment in your taxable income on your federal tax federal income tax return or pay income tax on your payment. It will not reduce your refund or increase the amount you owe when you file your 2020 federal income tax return. A payment also will not affect your income for purposes of determining eligibility for federal government assistance or benefit programs. I received an economic impact payment. Do I need to pay back all or some of the payment if, based on the information reported on my 2020 tax return, I don't qualify for the amount that I already received? No, there is no provision in the law that would require individuals who qualify for a payment based on their 2018 or 2019 tax returns to pay back all or part of the payment if, based on the information reported on their 2020 tax returns, they no longer qualify for the payment or would qualify for a lesser amount of the payments. For example, you received $500 for your child who, based on your 2018-2019 tax return, met the qualifying child requirements. That child turned 17 in 2020 and no longer meets the qualifying child requirements. You will not be required to pay back the $500. Or, for example, you received $500 for your child whom you claimed on your 2018-2019 tax return. You do not claim the child on your 2020 tax return because the child's other parent claims the child. You will not be required to pay back the $500 even if the child's other parent claims $500 for the same child on his or her 2020 tax return. Keep notice 1444, your economic impact payment with your 2020 tax records. The IRS mailed notice 1444 to your last known address within 15 days after the payment was made. 
So they're saying that they're going to send me a letter in the mail explaining why they took money off of my tax refund, even though I don't think that uh, they actually did it accurately or correctly uh, for obvious reasons that you saw in the beginning showing that uh, there was some computation errors, which would have been on the part of H&R Block. So I'm really hoping that they uh, hold themselves accountable for that, as I'll certainly be calling them tomorrow. So I will be getting a letter in the mail, and it says your notice or letter will explain the reason for the contact and give you instructions on how to handle the issue. If you agree with the information, there is no need to contact us. If when you search for your notice or letter using the search on this page, it doesn't return a result or you believe the notice or letter looks suspicious, contact us at 800-829-1040. If you determine the notice or letter is fraudulent, please allow the IRS assistance, assister's guidance or visit our report phishing page for next steps. To get a copy of your IRS notice or letter in Braille or large print, visit information about the Alternative Media Center page for more details. Why was I notified by the IRS? The IRS sends notices and letters to, for the following reasons. You have a balance due. You are due a larger or smaller refund. We have a question about your tax return. We need to verify your identity. We need additional information. We changed your return. We need to notify you of delays in processing your return. So what are the next steps? Each notice or letter contains a lot of valuable information, so it's very important that you read it carefully. If we change your tax return, compare the information we provided in the notice or letter with the information in your original return. If your notice or letter requires a response by a specific date, there are two main reasons you'll want to comply. First, to minimize additional interest and penalty charges. Second, to preserve your appeal rights if you don't agree. Pay as much as you can, even if you can't pay the full amount you owe. You can pay online or apply for an online payment agreement or offer in compromise. Visit our payments page for more information. Keep a copy of your notice or letter. It's important to keep a copy of all notices or letters with your tax records. You may need these documents at a later date. Feel free to contact us. We provide our contact phone number on the top right-hand corner of the notice of the letter. Typically, you only need to contact us if you don't agree with the information. If we requested additional information or if you have a balance due, you can also write to us at the address in the notice or letter. If you write, allow at least 30 days for our response. The location of the notice or letter number. You can find the notice CP or letter number LTR number on either the top or the bottom right hand corner of your correspondence. So that is my... 2020 tax return update looks like I uh, did finally get some information. Uh, it's definitely not right. I didn't even make $50,000, so there's no way that my adjust, adjusted gross income at all was over $75. So there's just there's definitely an error there, and it really sucks that uh, they screwed up my refund. But at least I am seeing some, you know, a change in status, and I'm getting some kind of information. So if you guys filed around when I did, which was January 30th, you got accepted the 12th or the 13th, check your uh, IRS to go app or check your where's my refund on irs.gov and see if you don't have any updates. If you do, be sure to drop a comment, let me know what's going on, if they made any changes or you see any changes to the status. Um, still going to have to see how it goes, but uh, obviously it has you know, down here at the bottom, if you have any questions or need additional information, please have the following on hand when you call. A copy of this page, a copy of your tax return, the notice we sent you. If you disagree with this change or the way we process your return, please contact us at such and such, such and such. That's my social. I was head of household. So that is definitely my correct return with the correct amount. Um, and so that's that. So that's my 2020 tax return update. Uh, for Sunday, April 4th. Happy Easter to everybody. Hope you're having a uh, happy, safe holidays with your friends and family. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for me and uh, ring the bell for notifications. We'll keep you up to date. Don't forget to check your uh, Where's My Refund status or your irs to go app. I'm John Lee. I'm on to the next one. We'll see you next time.